Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. I haven't had anybody join me yet. Um, so I don't know if that's because moving the cons around or because of my announcements. Uh, but um, I did get back um, my internet service just a few minutes before uh, four here. So um, I'll go ahead and get started and we'll see if everybody shows up and has some questions. Um, so if nobody shows up, this might be relatively short, but you can always uh, email me questions or whatever. Um, at this point, I believe everybody's stuff should be back. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty much caught up on tests and assignments and things. So uh, we're working on assignment for unit four this week. Oh, uh, one, one thing, if, if you're watching this video after the fact, um, as I said in my announcement about this week, um, I did want to emphasize, you know, that um, next week is our last week for our five week session here. But, you know, calling these weeks um, is a little bit misleading because um, for our fifth week, uh, we actually only get till Thursday. So, so we don't get the full week till Friday or Saturday or Sunday, um, which, which means next week's a bit short. So I encourage you to start keeping that in mind. Uh, in, in fact, it would be best if if you finish the, the test this week early um, and you get started on your assignment problem set, right? So you, you probably want to have those um, done earlier than usual to make certain because you, you can't turn in any, anything after Thursday, right? So you have to take the test and have it finished um, by Thursday. Uh, I mean, that's still midnight, um, but uh, I pretty much have to turn these things in like um, Friday morning, so it needs to be in there. I, I might even be grading stuff um, at midnight or past midnight. So, all right. So let's let, let, let's go ahead and, and um, I'll just go ahead and talk a little bit about the assignment. Like I said, this might be short unless I get some people come and ask some questions about it. So um, our week four, our unit four, I should say, um, is about memory management. So our goal is to, chapter seven is really kind of a little bit historical. It's about, um, uh, about basic memory management techniques. So looking at some of the first memory management techniques and then how those um, evolved into what we think of as modern um, paging um, and segmentation kind of systems. And then chapter eight um, is all about virtual memory. Okay, so virtual memory systems uh, use either paging or segmentation and add on um, the, this further idea that we don't have to have all the pages in memory uh, to run a process. Okay, and that was kind of a big deal. So there's a lot of implications. So, you know, you should watch my videos about it. Um, but um, anyway, I mean, we're looking at basic page replacement schemes here. So, so it's not, not a full virtual memory, virtual memory system. Um, it's just kind of the page replacement part. Um, so we're going to be implementing a few things, uh, including implementing a basic clock algorithm, which is a um, which is, which is one of the um, which is the normal page replacement scheme that's used in modern operating systems, some version of a clock algorithm. Again, like I talked a little bit about in our video lectures um, this week. So, um, so let me just go ahead and start with the tasks then. Um, so as usual, I mean, the first task, uh, hopefully is a bit of warm up. Um, there's, a, there's a few, uh, getter methods that are left um, unimplemented. So you have to start by implementing that. So you have to complete the functions um, to get the first test case working to like get memory size, get system time. I think it's just these three num page references. Um, so let's go ahead and look at those. Let's look at the tests a little bit. And uh, before I jump into those, um, maybe I can give a little bit of explanation about our class here, our um, um, memory paging class here. So let me go ahead and open up um, our sign the four folder in our dev box. Um, so as usual, you should first kind of test that um, all the tests, that the, the, the assignment compiles and, and runs the test. 
uh, as given. So everything I, I give you should always be able to be compiled and run when you first start working on the assignment. Right? So um, we're gonna make clean, we'll build. Build um, all the files of the part of the project, and um, you should see this message, uh, which means that it's built, and we should be able to run our test. I know the test as usual won't be passing, but um, um, this should be able to be run. So. We'll click in, in the test file here. Um, so yeah, the very very first one that doesn't pass um, is. Um, the very first test on line 30 here, um, pretty much that we have the very first um, check or assertion. Right? So um, most actually, this assignment, you're going to be making modifications in more than one file. So it's a little bit different than some of the other assignments that we've had so far um, in this class. Uh, but you're going to start off by making some changes to the get to, to the uh, paging system. Okay, so the paging system is a simulation. Um, that you should be kind of used to by now. So, so we're building this, this simulated paging system. Uh, let's look at the paging system header file. So um, a little explanation for how it works though. Uh, the paging system um, um, is a classic, um, we're, we're using um, a, uh, another class to implement the actual page replacement scheme um, so I believe I discussed that in here, um, I'm drawing a blank uh, real quickly, but this is an example of, um, of um, um, so, so, so the, the uh, we have a hierarchy of classes. So there's an example of object-oriented programming in here. Um, so there's this page replacement scheme, um, which is an abstract base class. And from those, we define uh, particular page replacement schemes. So it's like FIFO page replacement scheme or clock page replacement scheme. Okay, so I'll talk about more about those in a bit here. Um, So um, anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a, a blank on this, but, but this is a, a common um, pattern, uh, object-oriented pattern. So, so um, um, here, the, the, the paging simulator basically needs to have one of these page replacement schemes. So you have to tell it which page replacement scheme to use. Um, and and it, all the, the, the actual work of making the page replacement decisions happens in your concrete page replacement schemes or whatever page replacement scheme you're using, right? But all the page replacement schemes um, um, basically have to implement this, this abstraction, this API. So they have a couple of things that they do. So all of them um, can make a replacement decision and, um, um, and, and, and do some other things. And so we'll, we'll talk about those real quickly here. But that's what this... Um, Sorry, that's if you look at the paging system, that's what this private um, um, uh, page replacement scheme is. So this is going to be a pointer to a dynamically allocated um, page replacement scheme that we actually call to make our replacement decision, right? And you're going to have to implement um, the uh, the uh, decisions for a clock page replacement scheme. All right, that's part, but, but um, um, uh, there, again, the paging system though uh, itself is the actual simulator to, to, to simulate like a memory of pages um, and, and to load in a page reference um, stream uh, and to keep track of, um, of um, which pages are currently in memory. So this simulates um, a memory um, and um, uh, basically simulates um, um, all, all the things 
uh, of the actual pages in memory. Um, and then, you know, whenever it needs to, it calls the um, page replacement um, scheme um, to make a decision about which page needs to be kicked out um, so it can be replaced with a new one. So, um, all right, so let, let, let's just start with the, the getter methods that you have to work on, right? So as usual, um, in the previous three, uh, get number size, get some time, get number, get num page references, right? So if you look at the um, um, the test here, so notice that we create a paging system and we initialize it with five. Okay, um, so uh, the the five is the only parameter that that represents the number of physical frames. Okay, so if you if you've read or once you once you read. Um, our materials for this week, uh, when we talk about page replacement, uh, you have to have some idea of how many physical frames of memory you have that, that, um, um, that hold the pages that are currently being used by your operating system, right? Um, and, and of course, we can specify different numbers of physical frames, right? Um, we want to simulate in our simulations here. That's, that's one of our parameters, right? But we have other parameters like the system time, which starts at time zero. Um, so number of page references. So for a page stream that we load in here, um, um, this is just basically how many how many page references there, there's going to be in total for the simulation here, right? So for different simulations, we have different number of, um, of references that we're going to simulate those pages that we need to load into memory um, and determine whether we have a mix for, for our paging simulation. Um, so yeah, anyway, I mean, these are all uh, failing initially when you run the test, uh, even the very first one. For example, let's look at get memory size here. Um, in our um, implementation file, so page PPP, our implementation file. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I showed this before or not for this class. Um, um, you know, for any time you have an IDE that has like an outline function, that can be pretty helpful instead of just scrolling through all these things. So in this case, oh, I kind of wanted to maybe start though by looking at the um, constructor, right? So the, the, the normal constructor that we use, um, um, you pass in Uh, the memory size and a uh, page replacement scheme. Although I should mention, so if, if you were paying attention there, so if, if you saw it when we called the, when we created one of these paging system simulations, we only passed in, we only specified the memory size. So you might be asking, you know, because of what happened to the, the page replacement scheme there. Um, so if that's not specified, uh, we default to um, using a FIFO page replacement scheme, okay? And so this is an example of a default parameter here. So we specify a default. You can even use those for constructors like we do here, right? Um, so anyway, but, but yeah, we're already initializing the memory size. Um, And, and, and memory is going to be the actual memory of, of the, you know, so if, if we say that we have five physical frames, we create an array of integers. Um, uh, page numbers are just integers. So again, if you look at those, um, we use type defs um, um, to try and improve, improve readability. But since a page number always has to be um, a, a positive number, um, uh, we don't use zeros for a page number, or do we? I can't remember. Yeah, so we always use like one, two, three, four, five, a positive integer for our page number references here. 
So anyway, we give a type def for unsigned int for page numbers, um, but that's all it is. So, so this this array in memory is really just an array of unsigned integers here. Um, and if we start off with a memory size of five, we're going to have an array of, of five unsigned integers for a memory, and so on, right? So um, these can, these getter methods should be relatively simple. Um, so like I said, this hopefully just a warm up. So yeah, if we look at get memory size, um, yeah, it's just hard coded to return one there. So you want to actually re return the memory size um, for our simulation. Um, get system time um, shouldn't be zero. So again, that's another um, um, of the paging system. That's another uh, member variable of the paging system, the current system time. But it should start at zero. But um, but yeah, you don't want to re return zero. You want to return what the current system time is. Whatever. Uh, likewise for number of page references. So after we load a simulated page reference stream from a file, um, then um, you know this parameter will be set. Okay. Um, maybe I should step back a little bit. Uh, so normally when I've been doing these uh, for students, um, I, I look at the the, the, the simulation, the, the file that we load in that we use for simulations for the class. So as usual, those are in the sim files directory. And we'll just look at the um, first one here, right? So this is this is uh, really simple compared to some of our previous um, simulation files here, right? So basically, all you have is the first number is is the uh, number of page references that is going to be done in the simulation, right? And then the first one is the first page reference that happens at time zero, right? So so we start at system time zero. So at, at, at time zero, we had a reference to something on page two. And then at time one, we have reference to something on page three and so on. Right? So that, that's all there is for these page reference. Um, uh, you know, so we can get time moving forward and, and we're having references to form from different memory system that we're managing here, right? Um, all right, so let's talk about the other task then. So, um, so once you get the getter methods working, um, um, is uh, to, to get the, the paging simulation to work, we, we left a couple of methods um, um, unimplemented. So one thing that's basic to implementing paging system is you want to know if a reference is a hit or a miss, right? So uh, I'm kind of wishing that I had my whiteboard set up here, but um, um, you know, let's just go through a very basic one. Um, maybe I can open up like a, um, a file here, uh, an empty file. Um, Oh, that's fine. So um, let's say, so if we have our references here, right? Um, oh, no, um, it's over here. So, um, and, and let's say again that we're using a, a physical memory of size five. That means that we have five frames, right? Um, and um, I believe, it's fine. So I, I believe that um, uh, in our simulation, uh, we, we use zero indexing, right? so we call it frame number zero through four for a physical memory size of five. Right? But time zero, we have page two. So uh, again, I'm kind of going over, and in, in, uh, I went through some examples for this week's videos of, of doing page replacement schemes, right? So let's say we're doing a first in, first out, right? So initially, um, all these frames are empty, right? Um, so I'll put the content. So all these frames are empty initially, right? Um, 
So for first in, first out, well, the the um, um, until we fill up memory, uh, we won't have any possibility of having a um, of having a miss where we need to do uh, an actual make a placement decision. Okay, so all that means is that uh, so for our first page reference of two. Uh, we're just going to put that in memory uh, frame in our first available frame zero, right? Uh, and then we have a reference to page three. So these, these first two were both misses. Okay, so the, 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 the second task you have to do is implement the uh, is hit method, right? Uh, so I'll get back, it is page hit. So I'll get back to that. So, so for our first two references, though, it, the is page hit was false. So two wasn't a page hit because. Um, it was a miss. Well, memory was initially empty, and then then when we have a reference to three, it wasn't in memory, so that was also a miss. Uh, that but two was a page hit. Okay, so, so so two was a hit because two was in memory. And we have another miss for page one, and then another miss for page five. So should have called these. Um, the frame number over here, um, and then the book of page frame. frame number and page number there. Um, uh -oh, we've only got five frames of memory, so that means we've only got frames from zero to four. So, so I should have only had going up from zero to four here. Um, so when we had five, so we had two, which would be another hit, right? And then we have a reference to four, which was a miss. Right, and now memory is full finally. So, but five is a hit, so we don't have a, a page replacement decision. Uh, and three is a hit, right? Uh, and then two is a hit, and then five is a hit, and then two is a hit. Right? We only had pages one, two, three, four, and five, so we didn't have to make any page replacement decisions for this. Um, if we were to use this in our simulation, or something. Doesn't, doesn't really exercise their simulation very well, but um, let's, uh, let's uh, so I probably should have shown this with only three pages, but um, maybe we'll come back to that. Yeah. Um, is page hit um, returns a Boolean result. Um, So to figure out which page is being referenced, you have to use the the, the, the page reference um, 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 array. So we've got two arrays. We've got an array called memory. And we got an array called page reference. Okay, um, and and basically this one is is loaded from the simulation file. Um, so if if you know that the current system time is zero, if you look up system time zero in the page reference, that will get you you know whichever was the zero page reference, right? So page two was referenced at time zero here, right? Um, now to determine if it's a hit or a miss though, you have to search the memory, right? So that, that's what the task is for the is page hit, all right? So um, let's look at the, the function here. I'm gonna, um, over here. I might still need these. Uh, let's put those over here. Uh, let's put my test back over here. All right. So um, so uh, is page hit? Um, Oh, sorry, I skipped one. So, um, so yeah, that's task three. So, so before you do is page hit, you should do is memory full. So, is memory full um, should return false if, if there's any frames of memory that are empty frames, and return true if all the frames are not empty. Okay. So, um, is memory full was just I don't know a little bit further up there. So. Um, I can implement this one. So basically, you just have to search memory, right? So you know how big memory is because, uh, so you know what memory is because memory is uh, it's basically an array of page numbers. Um, so an array of unsigned integers, right? How big memory is, um, is, is handled by the memory size, okay? So you have to have a loop in here that, that looks through all of memory. Um, 
So if you ever find, uh, and, and basically memory is going to be initialized. So, so if you look again at the, um, the constructors um, for um, our paging system class here, Um, so these call reset system, and that's the thing that initializes memory. So in particular, basically, uh, whenever a new system or whenever you reset a, a, a paging simulation, um, it will reset all of memory so that all frames are, are considered to be currently empty, right? So it's an empty frame is just a... Um, the global constant that's defined. So, so again, we, we use zero to represent empty frames and non-zero positive integers represent actual frame numbers. But you should use the empty frame um, name, uh, the global constant. Right? So, um, so with that explanation, hopefully then is memory full is pretty straightforward, right? So, so basically you search memory. If you ever find uh, a frame of memory that's empty, empty, then you should return false. You know, it's not full if you find one frame. As soon as you find one frame that's not em that, that's empty, um, then your answer is false. Memory is not full. But if you if you check every memory frame um, and they all have they're all not empty, then you want to return true. Okay. So you know, basically you should have a loop, um, and, and um, if you ever find an empty frame, you want to return false, but if you get all the way through memory and, and none of your memory is, is um, empty, um, or it, and, and um, yeah, if, if none of those frames are empty, then you'd want to return true at the end, of the time, right? Structure is full. Um, and then so back to um, is page hit, right? So, um, So here, again, you know, once you did the is memory full, you got a little bit of practice of, of accessing memory. So here, you'll need a similar a, a loop again where you're, you're checking memory. But in this case, you want to be looking at the, the current page reference. And again, the, the current page reference depends on, you know, you look at what the current system time is, access the page reference array. That tells you what page is being referenced, okay? Uh, and then you want to search for that page in um, memory, all right? So and if you find find the page in memory, then it's a hit, right? So so as soon as you find the page in memory, you'd want to return true that that's a page hit. But if you search through all the frames of memory and you don't find the, that page that's the current reference for the current system time, then you would return false. So it's not a page hit, all right? So again, hopefully those two, once you understand what's happening here, um, aren't too tough. I don't think either of those first two are too bad. None of these first paths where you're implementing, completing up the, the paging system should be too tough. So. so then the final task four um, is we, we have to finish up the new page placement, okay? So um, as I talk about in our videos for this week, um, you, should, you should think about page replacement as being, or, or memory management as being broken up into two separate um, kind of phases. So there's an initial page placement, okay? Uh, or anytime memory has some frames that are empty, you don't have to do a replacement. You're just gonna be doing a page placement, right? So you pick one of the empty frames, right? And when you're doing a paging system, it doesn't really matter. If you've got one or more empty frames, you could just pick one of those empty frames at random, okay? What, what you should be doing for our simulation is if you have empty frames, um, since there's no way for a page to become empty, um, uh, except for it to be kicked out, to be immediately replaced by another, um, you, the, our initial page placement scheme um, um, phase happens until memory becomes full, and then we're going to be switching over to completely doing page replacement. Okay? So that's not always the case, but um, um, for our simulation, that's what will happen. So, so basically, though, we're just going to be doing FIFO. No, no matter what our actual page replacement scheme is, 
we just start with the empty frame zero um, and uh, do our initial page placement into empty frame zero. And then we place the next one into page one and so on. And well, I'll describe a little bit here, but the, 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 the do page placement, this isn't the replacement yet. This is just um, doing um, page placement. Um, so yeah, and, and um, there's a little bit of some complicated. So page placement should never be called if memory is full. So you want to check, you want to reuse your um, is memory full. And if it's true that is memory is full, um, and somebody's called do page replacement, you want to um, throw a simulator exception, which you've had to do before um, for assignment to this class here. So. Basically, though, again, you need to search through memory. Um, so, so it's it's not the case. Uh, we're, we're we're not going to do something like keep an actual pointer, so you can do a FIFO for your for your initial placement. Basically, just search from the top of memory to to the first index that you find, the first frame in memory that you find that's empty. Um, and uh, if you find an empty frame, then just place the, the next page uh, in that empty frame. Okay. So again, you know, we don't pass in the, the page. You just need to know that whatever the current system time is, that's the page that's trying to be uh, played uh, here, right? All right. So that's that. That's the basic. Like I said, these are meant to hopefully be relatively quick, so kind of warm ups. Um, once you get those working, um, that should allow you to pass. Um, I believe um, uh, that that will allow you to test to, to pass the test up to this point at the line two hundred. So I think I like the first two or first three test cases. So where we're testing initial page placement and testing your um, implementation of the getter and setter methods and some other things. So, so yeah, I think it was the first three method. So then after that, um, oh, the first five test cases, yeah, because I give you FIFO basically. So once you do implement those first four tasks, um, it should actually also pat, be passing the, the basic FIFO um, page replacement um, and a little bit of some system tests, so testing the full simulation. Um, so then what you're gonna be doing is implementing um, a clock page replacement scheme, okay? But let, let me, um, so in order to implement the clock page replacement scheme, you basically kind of want to copy what the FIFO page replacement scheme does, but implement, uh, you know, you have to implement, so clock is a little bit more complex than FIFO, okay? So let's look at how FIFO page replacement scheme works, okay? So to do that, let's look at, let's start by looking at the, instead of the do page placement, so the do page placement is the thing that you have to implement, um, right? So it should just be an empty function or stub. But the do page replacement um, is implemented, but the way it's implemented is basically um, um, it calls um, a function called make, pay, make replacement decision, right? Which should be returning a frame number to replace. Um, and then it kicks out that, that frame to replace in memory. With the, with the new page reference, again. So make replacement decision um, is another function in um, on our paging system here, uh, or is it? There it is. Um, but all make replacement decision does is it calls the make replacement decision for the, the current scheme, okay? Um, and then like I mentioned once before, like, like the default scheme, if you don't specify a page replacement scheme is it will use FIFO, okay? So you'll end up having a, um, 
uh, a FIFO page replacement scheme created. Uh, and then for that FIFO page replacement scheme, it calls the make replacement decision, which should be returning back uh, a frame to replace. All right. But let's see how that works for FIFO um, real quickly here. So um, to see that, we'll need to open up um, our FIFO page replacement scheme. Uh, let, let me look at the, the, the page replacement scheme um, um, abstract class here. So there's a page replacement scheme by HPP, right? This is an example of, of inheritance. And, and page replacement scheme is mostly an abstract based class. So it defines in C++, uh, we define abstract classes by using this virtual keyword. If you've never done um, object-oriented programming in C++ before. Right. So this is really just defining an API. So any class that, that wants to inherit, that wants to be a child class, you know, that, that wants to, to, to implement this page replacement scheme API that's defined by the base class, has to implement these virtual functions. So reset scheme, uh, page hit, get scheme status, and that make replacement decision. Um, so actually both, um, both the, the paging um, system and the page replacement scheme, they, they have pointers to each other, okay? So, so these, both of these classes help each other, right? Um, so in this case, um, when the paging system creates the page replacement scheme that it's gonna be using to make page replacement decisions, it passes in itself so that the page replacement scheme in turn knows what the paging system is. Right. So this, this is how we use uh, make make calls back um, to the paging system if we need to. So in particular, uh, so I'm going to open up FIFO. So if you look at FIFO page replacement, um, it just implements those virtual methods, right? So they're not virtual anymore, and and it inherits from the page replacement scheme, right? So FIFO is a child class of the page replacement scheme. It says page replacement scheme is a is an abstract based class, so, so a virtual class. Um, um, FIFO is a concrete class because it has it, it implements all those virtual methods. So the reset scheme, page hit, get scheme, and make replacement scheme, right? Um, Uh, let's jump to making the, to the make replacement decision. Okay, so FIFO, if you've looked at um, our materials this week for for the, the different page replacement schemes like FIFO and um, 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 the optimal um, and, and so on, right? Um, the way that FIFO works is it just keeps track of a frame pointer and it, it treats the, the memory as a circular, bu a circular buffer, like we talked about, right, in our um, videos for the class this week. So you'll notice that um, 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 uh, FIFO page replacement uh, defines a private variable called frame pointer, um, and that should be initialized to zero in the constructor, right? So to make it, if it's asked to make a page replacement decision, um, returns what the current frame pointer is, making certain that it increments the frame pointer. Okay, so so basically the, the way the, the FIFO page replacement works is it assumes that the frame pointer is pointing to the current frame that should be replaced if it's asked to make a, a replacement decision, right? So, so it remembers that so it can return that and then it just increments the frame pointer, but uh, modding it by the memory size. And notice that we call the paging system to get the memory size if we have to, so that we know that if we increment, so again, if, if the, the memory size is like five and we just incremented um, past the in the memory, this will wrap it back around to frame zero, right? So, so that's what we're doing here. And that's, that's all we need to make a replacement decision for FIFO is, is treat memory as a circular buffer. Right. Um, let's look at these other functions real quickly um, because um, you'll have to implement these for your clock, but, but most of these will probably be, so, you know, for a clock, um, so if I can jump to what you'll need to do for your clock, for a clock page replacement scheme, you're also treating memory as a circular buffer, but your decision on whether to use 
the, the frame that's being pointed to as the frame to be replaced is a little bit more complex. So you don't just immediately return that frame. You have to make a decision by keeping track of the use bit for a clock system, right? So if the use bit is um, um, is is one, um, if it's been used recently, you're not going to select that page for replacement. You're going to skip over. So basically, you have to search through memory to find a, fr um, a frame with the use bit of zero, uh, which which means it hadn't been used recently um, uh, or that recently, as recently as others whose use bits are one. Right. Uh, and as soon as you find a frame is, that's zero, whose use bit is zero, that's the frame you're going to return to be replaced. But if the frame is one, you instead set its, its use bit to zero and then keep searching, search for the next frame. Okay? So that's, again, I'm, I'm repeating some of the stuff that you should learn in our materials for um, page replacement scheme this week, but that's kind of how the clock works, right? So that's that's what so so you're going to be doing some similar things for your make replacement decision for the the clock scheme, but but it's a little bit more complicated. And also, just as as a hint, I, I believe I mean more than a hint, I, I believe I I described this in the assignment description. But you know you, you will need a frame pointer like for FIFO, but you'll also need like an array of use bits. So you're going to have to keep track in your clock page replacement scheme of a use bit for every frame of memory. Right, and, and whether that use bit is zero or one, right? Um, so talking about those, so again, to reset, if we're at, if for FIFO to reset, it's, it's pretty simple. You just want to reset the frame pointer back to zero. For a clock page replacement scheme to reset, you, you need to set the, the frame pointer back to zero, back to the initial frame of memory. But uh, you're going to have to have an array of use bits, and you're going to want to set all of your use bits initially to be um, zero or to be false if you're using like a, an array of booleans, right? So um, I would prefer to use an array of booleans. So false means the use bit is not set, and, and true means it, it, it's set, right? Because if, if the use bit is just zero, one, it's really a boolean, but you could use zero, one, like an integer or something like that. Um, so another thing, um, so um, whenever a page hit occurs, um, the, the paging system is going to call the paging schemes uh, page hit method. Okay? Why do we do that? We do that because for some page replacement schemes, they have to know when a page hit occurs. And that's, that's the case for a clock, because for the, the, the clock page replacement scheme, whenever a page hit occurs, uh, you need to set the use bit to one because that, or, or the use bit to true, right? Because that page, that frame's page has been used recently. So you want to, you, you want to reset your use bit to one or true, or however you're representing your use bit. Well, for FIFO, you know, you don't have to do anything for page hits, but for the clock page replacement scheme that you're going to be doing, uh, you need to have some representation of the use bits for your clock scheme, and you need to set the use bit to true or to one for the frame whenever a page hit occurs on a frame, All right? Um, oh, and then finally, to get your system tests to work, um, you are going to have to, you, you'll mostly be able to copy the get scheme status from the, the FIFO page replacement scheme. Uh, but if you look at the expectations for my for the system test for the clock page replacement scheme, so just real quickly, and this will probably be the end of this video here, because um, I think we've covered everything then. Um, but let's look at the results for um, So if you look at that method, this over here um, for the get scheme status. This is where it's outputting basically this. So, so this is called at every uh, system time clock tick, um, and it outputs uh, what the uh, current frames of memory are. Um, oh, and this this is an example of clock. So I wanted to show actually the FIFO first. So so if you look at FIFO, it just it just outputs all of the the 
the, the, the current memory and it shows where the current frame pointer is um, and it shows whether the memory is, uh, has, is empty or not, or if it has a frame or not, right? Um, and uh, actually that's it, that some, some of this is actually uh, calculated or done by the, the paging system. So you don't have to calculate the hit ratio or the fault ratio or the hit counter thing. So, so these things happen uh, in the paging system, um, but, but the, the, the status happened in your um, page replacement scheme here. And for the status, you mostly just need to be, uh, and yeah, this, this first stuff also happens in the pages. So you mostly just have to output the current state of memory. Okay. So why do we do that in the scheme status? So um, we do that mostly because we want to be able to, for some of these paging systems, um, there's some extra information that's not part of the basic paging system. So it's information that the, um, the page replacement scheme keeps track of. So in particular, for your clock paging scheme, you also need to output, you know, not just the, 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 the memory and, and what's in each frame and whether it's empty or has a page in it, but you need to output the use bits, right? So that's the thing that you're keeping track of. So you just need to add something um, um, to your version of the get scheme status. Uh, so, so you can use basically the, the, the same stuff that we have, but somewhere between where you um, output the contents of memory, whether it's empty or has a page number um, and, and the frame pointer, uh, you need to output um, the um, status of the use bit for each frame here in the suite. All right. All right, so yeah, nobody joined me here, but I think that covered everything. So, so you know, if you look at the second part here, this is the, all the tasks you need to do to implement the clock paging uh, scheme. Um, but I, I probably hit all those things. So you will need a uh, frame pointer, but, but you also need an array. Um, so I rec I rec I would use an array of Boolean. Probably my solution used that, but um, you can use an array of integers or Booleans. Um, and you will have to implement all of those methods. So you have to implement the reset scheme, um, page hit, make replacement decision, and the get scheme status, right? So the first three, once you get these first four done, um, that should get it so you'll be passing all the tests, but you won't be able to pass the system. And so those pass the unit test, but you won't pass the system test until you then implement the, the get scheme status like um, I talked about. So adding in representation of the use bit settings um, for the clock. Um, oh, I had an extra credit on there, but um, yeah, so if you want some extra credit, um, you could also implement another paging, uh, page replacement scheme, right? So like, LRU or optimal. If you do this, um, maybe attach it separately. Um, so, so if you do your make um, um, submit, it won't um, pick that up by default. So just attach it to attach. You would have to, to, to make modifications to like the make file to, to correctly um, compile this. Um, and you might want to make um, modifications to the, um, the the main simulation to do this. You definitely have to have like, um, you know, if you, if you do LRU, you have to have an LRU page replacement.hpp and an LRU page replacement.cpp. But yeah, attach any of those files. So, so first make certain that you do a make submit before you work on the extra credit. Um, um, but then um, after that, you can work on it and, and just attach separately like your, your, whatever your page replacement um, files were. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, as usual, if you have questions, feel free to email me or if you need um, a face to face, let me know. Um, we can always, or Zoom, we can wrap it up. Um, but, but yeah, so I'll post this video as usual. Hopefully, uh, since people didn't watch while we did it, um, you know, you can watch um, um, offline. Um, after I post this. And yeah, I'll see you later.